Wild Card Sunday. Four teams start the day, only two will survive. To get back to Tampa, the Gulf Warriors have to march into Frigid Philly. Will the weather be a factor at the bet? Can the Bucks finally figure out the key to winning in the cold? Ray Lewis and the Roaring Ravens D try to stop Denver from getting their eighth straight postseason win. Which superstar running back will carry their team to victory? Shannon against his former team, who will be sharper? NFL Prime Time! Playoff Edition! Coming up next! NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Primetime is Miller time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. And hello for the final time in the year 2000. Chris Berman along with Tom Jackson. Thomas, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, boom. To you and yours. Good to have you back. <laughs> Holy I know you missed me. <laughs> just... Holy makahiki ho, as they say in the Hawaiian Islands. It's about to be 2001, a space odyssey. Do we have a playoff odyssey, or there's some time-tested uh, ways that you can advance. I think we started talking about it at the beginning of the year. Bring your defense. Holds true right now. There are some teams that have some serious defense that are moving on and others that are moving out. And a team that set a record for the fewest points allowed in a 16-game season, the Baltimore Ravens played it with 165 played a team that scored 485. The Denver Broncos at the Big Crab Cake. A clash of South's first playoff game in Baltimore since the Ghost of the Post in 1977. Look at the wind. Brian Greasy, they were hoping his shoulder would let him play, but no, it's going to be Gus Barat studying the play chart. And he didn't want to study this. The pass intended for Ed McCaffrey, tipped, intercepted by Ray Lewis. What a season he's had in the middle for the Ravens top. Yeah, and you watch Ray Lewis play the run. He's going to mirror the running back. Here he's going to go just outside what we call the A-gap, come back, make a great tackle on Mike Anderson, then watch him work inside, outside, and again, a great tackle on Anderson down around the ankles, and he gets excited to play. Now, Gus Farad had helped roll up a lot of points since Greasy got hurt of the Monday night game against Oakland, but he can't handle the snap. It's a 13-yard loss. He's hit hard by Peter Bouya. It did too much reading, I think, on the <laughs> sideline. Tom, too late to study for your final exam. Trent Dilfer to Kadri Ismail gets a first down. Now, he knew Baltimore offensively would need a couple breaks and a pretty good game from their rookie running back, Jamal Lewis. Look at Lewis shed everyone, including Romo down to the one-yard line in the battle of rookie running backs, Lewis against Mike Anderson. Yeah, number 75, Jonathan Ogden with the nice seal block. Number 32, Sam Gash kicking outside, and Jamal Lewis hitting the hole on time. And then Lewis, oh, the ball is over the line. It's 7-0. And there Ravens with the early in the second quarter. Next drive, Baltimore's Denver pinned in the third and 15. One of the few big plays for Denver, the little pass to Rod Smith, who had such a big year for the Broncos, 21 yards to the chagrin of Brian Billick. Third and one now, it's four plays later. The big fella, Tony Siracusa, stuffs 1,500-yard man Mike Anderson. They settle for an Elam field goal at 7-3. Marvin Lewis and the Baltimore defense setting records for good reason, Tom. Tony Saragusa showing, showing some athleticism, yes. leaping over Dan Neal to make that tackle on short yardage. Next possession, biggest play of the game. Dilfer looking for Lewis, and Denver's going to come up big. It's the tip, but no, they're not going to come up big. The former Bronco with Shannon Sharp gets past Romanowski, gets a block from Sam Gash. No one's going to catch him. Where's the secondary, Tom? It's a touchdown. Dilford is sharp, kind of. 14-3, Raven. And what a huge play this was. The ball initially should have been caught by Jamal Lewis. It gets tipped. Terrell Buckley could have had the interception. Presence of mind by Shannon Sharp to make the pick and get to the sideline and then try to pick up your blocks. Great block right there by Sam Gash on Romanowski and then outruns the entire Denver defense to the end zone. Where were they? Patrick Johnson making a block downfield number 83. So now it's 14-3 for this defense in the third quarter. But wait a minute, here's Denver. Billy Jenkins comes in and nails Dilfer on the blitz. And he had to leave for a series. Yeah, you just watch his head inside the helmet. You can tell how much that hit by Jenkins hurt Dilfer, but he would return. Yes, he would. And speaking of return, Jermaine Lewis has been a great return guy. But Denver did okay for a while, but look at him turn it up to the 30-yard line. Then two plays later, it's Jamal Lewis. And the rookie 
Goes off Riga, bounces outside, then bounces away from Denver in a 27-yard touchdown. It's a 21-3 lead for this defense. Former teammate of Tennessee, Al Wilson, right there, had the shot on Jamal Lewis in the hole, but Jamal Lewis really uh, showing his power and the speed combination inside the red zone to get the Ravens a touchdown. So now with Denver looking for a miracle, here they come. Michael McCrary and Keith Washington. Hello! McCrary had six, uh, three sacks. Two plays later in third and 20. Rob Burnett, who quietly has had such a big year. Hello! Five sacks for the Ravens defense. Farratt, 13 to 28 for 124. Ten-year Bronco, now Raven Shannon Sharp. And Brian Billick coaching in his first playoff game as a head coach. They deal Denver and Mike Shanahan their first loss in the playoffs in the last eight games. It's 21-3. The biggest play of the game made by Shannon Sharp with our Susie Culver afterwards. Shannon Sharp says this was the matchup he dreamed about, but this was a perfect game in every phase, offense, defense, and special teams. Yeah, I always said that. Uh, I thought I, I, it was going to be our, def our offense against their defense because I felt our defense and their offense was going to be a wash. So we had to find a way to put some points on the board. Once we got the lead, our defense told us we'd give them 14 points. They weren't going to score anymore, so... We got 21 for good measure. Played a good game today. When you don't turn the football over in the playoffs, you're always difficult to win. Wildest play of the game, your 58-yard TD. Give us your view. It was a situation that happened to be at the wrong place at the right time. I kind of got up under Jamal's route, and I saw the ball get tipped. I thought T-Buck was going to pick it, and when Jamal tackled him, the ball just kind of hung up in the air. I just caught the ball to rake down the sideline. Bill Romanowski suggested that if you were scoring, you'd be talking. What was it like? It was good. I just had good nature fun. It, was, it wasn't the normal stuff that I would normally do because I got so much love and respect for those guys. I, I really appreciate what the organization did for me my first 10 years in the league. But now the Ravens, the sky's the limit for this team. If we keep playing the way we play, we're going to be awful difficult to beat. We know we got a tough task next week in Tennessee, but we're going to be up for the challenge. Congratulations. Thanks, Susie. Ravens moving on. Let's go back to you. All right, Susie, thank you very much. And what a class word at the end about what Denver did for Shannon Sharp, by a guy who just beat the Broncos. You don't hear that for everyone. The Baltimore defense held Denver to 177 yards, nine first downs. Uh, Brian Billick, you know what? He's even a convert. This year in the league, defense seems to be and and that you're talking from a guy that that believes that offense is the way to win a championship explosive plays but it seems to be defense is, is and running the ball is the key and and uh the teams that have the most explosiveness in the other end seem to be disappearing so we'll see how this thing pans out we didn't get it done offensively i didn't get it done offensively and i apologize to my teammates for not playing it um you know the way i know how i can play uh, i missed some throws today and uh, i'd love to have some things back but uh just got to regroup. Uh, it's, it's hard to end a season like this. This defense or this team can go and keep on going and uh, win. It'll be compared as one of the best of all time, if not the best. But I think it's all predicated on winning. Well, here's a little nugget dug up by Russ Baxter Research. 125 games coach, head coach Mike Shanahan. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is the first time his team has been held to three points. Tells you what Baltimore has done. Miami beats offensive Indy. New Orleans, Tommy beats mm -hmm. offensive mm -hmm. St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Baltimore beats offensive Denver. Mm -hmm. One is an accident, two is a trend, three is whoa. Uh, uh, three means that you need to bring your defense, and I think St. I think certainly we saw the best defense in football today in the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the best middle linebacker in the game in Ray Lewis. They walk a fine line between outstanding run defense at the line of scrimmage and doing a great job in pass defense as well. Uh, you look at Gus Farratt, 13 to 28, 124 yards and an INT. You're talking about the second highest scoring offense in the NFL to be held down like that. And I think certainly if they get a little bit of the running game, today it was 30 carries for Jamal Lewis for 110. 10 yards. That's the combination that wins. Brian Billick is a pretty smart head coach. Well, he, he was the offensive coordinator when Minnesota set the record yes. scoring points. Yes, now he's the he head knows coach how to do it both ways. The, that, that game next week, Baltimore, Tennessee will be a head knocker as, as their games have been this year. Uh, including Baltimore's the only team ever to win in Tennessee. Baltimore has now won eight straight games. And as we go inside the numbers, you run the ball like Jamal Lewis did. You stuff the run. And remember, Denver running the ball. I mean, here's Anderson with 1,500. You know what kind of line they have. So this is uh, the last eight games, all wins. They've run for close to 1,000. 
They've given up rushing under 400 yards. You see the the remaining statistics go right along with that. You run it and stop the run, you got a chance. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. When we return, the late game, Donovan McNabb, how could he single-handedly beat the Bucs? Independence Bowl between Mississippi State and Texas A&M. I missed the poll on Weed Eater Independence Bowl, but hey. NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Don't forget, if there's playoffs, we're there for you every day. Next Saturday, an hour at 11 a.m. on NFL Countdown. Sunday at 11.30 a.m. And, of course, on Saturday and Sunday in 2001. NFL Drive. Yeah, it's the late game. Bucks at Eagles. You had a feeling it would be below 40 degrees. Back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. The fourth piece of the wild card weekend puzzle, Tampa Bay at Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. There are the Eagle fans. They're fired up, literally. Oh, we're going to start this after 4 o'clock to make sure it's nice and cold for the Bucs who are trying to get fired up with Keyshawn Johnson. Just in case they didn't know, they're 0-19 when the temperature is like 28 degrees. The new sign man. But it wasn't. It was not the temperature. It was plays like this by the Eagles defense. Damon Moore stuffs Warwick Dunn. Eagles blitz again, and it's time. It's Carlos Emmons. Names you will begin to know. Making the play defensively. Here's another blitz. And Sean King. Well, you know this name. What a big year Hugh Douglas has had. It's a FAMO! And the Eagles have recovered. A lot of the blitzes that were called by the Eagles were combination run-pass blitzes. This is a pass blitz. Look at the top of the screen. That's Hugh Douglas matching up against Warwick Dunn. And Sean King has to help him out and know to get rid of the football. He didn't right there. Hugh Douglas made the hit, caused the fumble. So first down with the score 3-0, under four minutes to go. First down on the Eagles 15. This was the first turnover of the game. Teams knowing that the first mistake would cost them. And Donovan McNabb runs to keep a first down going. Then on third and goal from the five, it's a quarterback draw. Touchdown against the vaunted Bucks defense because they only had to go a short field, very short field, 7-3 Philly. Great chess match at the line at the line of scrimmage here at the goal line. Shelton Quarles and Derek Brooks lined up in the A and B gaps. Look at them lead the gap. Work done running the quarter. I mean, uh, Donovan McNabb running the quarterback jaw does a great job of being patient to get that touchdown. And how about him letting his big tackle Trey Thomas take that jump shot that Donovan <laughs> likes taking? Hey, you guys are doing a great job up top with Runyon and Thomas at the tackles. Short pass to Brian Mitchell, first down. Now, when you have trouble running the ball, as the Eagles do, you use a West Coast offense. These plays are really runs. I know they're little short passes that can go three to 10 yards. Another one to Mitchell for a first down. Early West Coast offense. And then you have a smart quarterback making smart decisions and receivers running precise routes. McNabb to Mitchell again, first down. Two plays later with seconds left in the half. McNabb to Charles's Johnson. Inside the 10, there's 17 seconds left. First and goal from the five. Na 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 Brown. Nay Brown touchdown. 14 to 3, Philadelphia. What great touch shown by Donovan McNabb as he's throwing off his back foot to Nay Brown, hits him right in the corner of the end zone. You can see how pleased he is with the throw. So now Philly with the lead and Philly playing with confidence against the win here in the third. Again, it's the little swing pass this time to Brian Mitchell again. This is like running the ball West Coast style. The pass to Charles Johnson on third and four stop short of the first down. And so, and so the bundle up Eagles fans go for it. Here's a cheesesteak boy is McNabb a keeper first down. And the defense, uh, they say we get to sit down and warm up. Another short pass. Look at McNabb, poised for the second-year player. To Torrance Small, eight yards. Chipping away at Warren Sapp, who was very quiet, Tommy, on this afternoon. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, the chores. 36-yard field goal, no good. 
for David Green Acres, but a 14 play, seven minute and 44 second drive meant that Tampa got the ball only once with the win in the third quarter. And then here comes Hugh Douglas. Hugh Douglas, a great job of getting down the line of scrimmage. He actually checked to see if it was going to be the bootleg, flattened out down the line, and what great speed by the defensive end. And around George Hageman, it's it's the sack Sean King enforces a punt. Hugh Douglas continuing a Pro Bowl year. Next Eagles possession on first and ten. It's Donovan McNabb. He says, your defense going to play like that? Well, maybe we'll move the ball a little farther. And he throws it up, and it's a flag as he looks for Charles Johnson. Flag as Johnson battled Donnie Abraham. Yeah, Donnie Abraham actually pretty good coverage right here. He just never gets his head back in that hand fighting right there. If the official doesn't see you look back for the ball, you're going to get that call. And look at this. They're going to run from that formation, right? Wrong. They're not. They're going to throw to the second tight end, Jeff Thomason. Touchdown, Philadelphia, who outthought the Bucks all day long. 21 to 3, Philly. Tony Dungy's team has had a long road. A road they hope would not be here in Philly in the wild card game. Owner Jeffrey Lurie, coach Andy Reid, Donovan McNabb, the Philadelphia Eagles. Impressive in really this group's first playoff game. They hadn't been in the playoffs in four years. 21 to 3, Philadelphia wins it. And 24 of 33 for 161 for Donovan McNabb is like seven and a half yards of completion. Who cares? They won McNabb with Sal Palantonio. What was the key for you guys to just attack the ball from the get-go? Well, we were well prepared. Uh, just coming out, we felt we had to take them deep a little bit, to soften them up. We knew that Lynch was going to be very involved in the run. Uh, but, you know, got a chance to get out of pocket a little bit. Receivers came back to me, and we made some big plays. Your offensive line shut down Warren Sapp so effectively. How'd they do it? Well, they've just been preparing all throughout the week, and, uh, you know, we've been getting better, you know, each week. They've been able to gel and develop a chemistry all year, and, you know, that's the most important part. Can you beat the Giants? Well, we're definitely going to prepare just like we did for this game, and uh, hopefully we can have the same result. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, Boomer. All right, Sal, thank you. The next opponent is the New York football Giants, who have beaten Philadelphia eight straight times, but that's next week. Mike Allstein actually ran well for a while, but his knee is good, but you know what? Too little, too late for a Philadelphia team that looked like they've been in the playoffs before. The fans, unbelievable out there. What a great atmosphere. Uh, they were as wild as can be, uh, and uh, but yet I think they conducted themselves pretty good. Uh, they, we'll see how the rest of the night goes, but they were they were awesome. They made some plays, got it into third and shorts, and kind of kept the drives going. But the game was going back and forth, you know, pretty even. They got the turnover, and I thought they got an emotional lift, and we didn't really mess, step up and match that. Let's start with Philadelphia here, Tommy, because I think in addition to a young team knowing what they can do, they also, starting with head coach Andy Reid, know what they can't do. That's Don't correct. try and be somebody That's else. Correct. Run this early West Coast offense yes. in the early 80s, San Francisco. Early Brett Favre years with mm -hmm. Green Bay. Early years now with Donovan. We can't run really well. Throw these short passes. Stay poised within ourselves. Yeah, minimal yardage in the passing game so for what? Donovan McNabb, but very accurate, very efficient passing game. And that's what you saw the Philadelphia Eagles use. And I think if you look for two areas of improvement, the poise of Donovan McNabb today, uh, taking this team apart basically with the short passing game that Chris mentioned and then a defense that played mm -hmm. outstanding ball at the line of scrimmage. Again, combination run pass blitzes headed by Hugh Douglas who had the two sacks, the forced fumble and we talked about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and what they had to do to be successful. We thought that Warwick Dunn had to get his 20 plus carries as he did in their last four wins. Today, eight carries for one yard. Field position early in this game, Lendetta played a role in it that yes. Tampa had to go Brian along. Brian Mitchell returning oh. the ball. I think that was a big pickup for the Eagles, Brian Mitchell and John yeah. Runyon. The and a big loss for the signed. Skins. Very big. <laughs> I think, Tommy, we would be remiss if we did not say a very sad finish to a year that began with yes. such promise yes. for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, it, this all of a sudden became not a darling team. They became a public team with public problems. And without XOing this to death, I, 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 I just want to say that I think that we've seen such great chemistry on this team, That's specifically right. the defense, but it took so long That's to right. regain that chemistry, they used too much mental energy That's all right. year to get back on track, and in the end, it cost them. Affected them on the field, and, and if you're Tony Dungy, you just hope to be able to get it back by the time you open up next season. So the Eagles moving on, and these five and six seeds, we'll see you. Need not apply.
top four seeds moving on as the all four home game home teams won games this weekend. Game balls coming up next. Snowing, but there's Jackie Sherrill and R.C. Slocum. They're, they're such good coaches. They made it stop snowing at the San Fernando Tennis Bowl coming up next. Primetime Players is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. The easy way to say. Boomer, my game ball goes to that great Ravens defense. Five sacks today and INT uh, held the Broncos to 177 yards allowed. And boy, what fun it is to watch the best linebacker in football, Ray Lewis. Poise, poise, and then some more poise. He finished runner-up in the MVP voting. A lot of folks haven't really seen Donovan McNabb mature game by game this year. The Bucks got a view up close. He gets my game ball. We will discuss next weekend's division matchups as we're down to eight. Stay with us. NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And in part by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. So, the AFC playoffs, Miami at Oakland is the Saturday game. What a heroic effort by Miami's defense yesterday. And the rematch, Baltimore, the only team in two years to beat Tennessee at Adelphia Coliseum. They'll have a chance to try that on Sunday. Oakland has blown teams out at home, but hey, we, we, people keep underestimating Miami and the speed and the overall ability of that defense and, and the way they came back yesterday. And that Baltimore-Tennessee game. Buckle your chin strap, Tommy. Yeah, look at the four AFC teams left in the playoffs. I think you see the key. You're going to see solid defense. You're going to see the ability to run the football. The Raiders may be the, the defense that is not as good as the other three, but their quarterback, if they get an early lead, they are certainly good enough. Yeah, they're not they're in the middle. That's correct. Defense. Now in the <laughs> NFC, here's the way we go. New Orleans, surprising New Orleans at Minnesota. That's the Saturday game early. and the Oh, you want Philly and the Giants late on Sunday. I mean, this is an <laughs> NFC East bone-chilling game, and of course, uh, Philly is 0 for the last 8 against the Giants. How do they get over that hump? Well, they, they got to break the string. I think that the Giants are looking at a different Donovan McNabb. Home field advantage we find out in the playoffs means something. I don't know what yet, but it certainly means something to be playing at home. 2001. May you have your own personal best space odyssey. From all of us to all of you, Happy New Year. Drive safely, please. With Tom Jackson, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching NFL Primetime. Welcome to Capital One's presentation of the ESPN Bowl Week. Great opportunity, Nick. Great opportunity. Focus, focus, focus. Especially, I love all you guys. Let's go play hard. A last chance of the season to excel and reach past the obstacles to lay it all on the line. Tonight, a matchup of two bruising football teams. The Aggies of Texas A&M, a team that took Oklahoma to the brink of defeat. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State, boasting triumphs over Florida and Auburn. Led by coach Jackie Sherrill, who returns to face his former team for the first time. It's Texas A&M against Mississippi State in the Independence Bowl. Now